And uh, what I want to look at on this is the um, the cam plate or the gear lever pull spring. Um, this is the when the spring fails, you can't change gear. Whatever gear you happen to be in at the time that the spring fails is the gear that you're stuck in because the pull drops down and out of index uh, due to gravity uh, and it doesn't matter how much you move your gear lever uh, it won't turn this plate and so that won't get the gears to change. So when I'm overhauling gearboxes I tend to replace these as a matter of course so that's what I'm going to show you how to do uh, now to change that component part. This cam plate uh, as I said uh, moves the selector forks which change the gears and uh, we've got some indexing cutouts here um, which give you the location. This nylon roller which is also spring loaded rolls over the cam plate and that's that that gives you the feel for the gears changing so we've got a shallow cutout there which is neutral we go in that direction that gives first we go into the next deep cutout that second third fourth top so that's what moves when you get your gears so we put that back in the shallow curve in the, sorry in the shallow uh, cutout and we're going to take it apart so as we can get at this spring here. So to do that um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the thing in first gear and uh, to show you um, a good an easy way to get the assembly back together what I use is a bit of uh, Tipex uh, and I just put a dot on one of the teeth there and a mark uh, and an indexing mark on that so that we know when we go to put this back together that tooth has to go into that slot to get the indexing correct you can't really get it wrong but if you're doing this for the first time it helps if you've got some reference marks so having done that we'll just remove the circlet and then we can pull off that cam plate there. We've got three cam rings because we've got three selector forks. So each selector fork slots into those particular cam rings when we when we're assembling it. To get the next one out, we've got to take this circlip off. And then we can slip, pull the pull the pull away from the cam from the cam plate, and then we can slip that cam plate up. You notice that that sprung out as we did it, and that's okay. And uh, now we've got to get at this spring, and to get at the spring, we need to get that little clip out. do that we just ease that e-clip out and then we can remove we're going to put a new one in there and uh, uh, replace so here's the spring I'm going to replace and uh, that just goes into position, it's a little bit fiddly get that up and over so that we've got the groove appeared we uh, put a new clip in it just slots into position and then we can start replacing the cam plate so that needs to there's the white mark for your groove that needs to slot down into position. This this spring needs to be preloaded. It 
So there's the spring in position. That wheel sometimes can be replaced as well if it's worn. That can be replaced by removing that, that circlip there and the wheel, nylon wheel just slides off. So if that is worn, that can also be replaced. Um, and then we need to replace the circlip. And then we can put the other cam plate back in. So there's the, the marked tooth going back into alignment with its slot. So that just goes back together. Very simple job this to do. And for the cost of the spring, which is pennies, it's worth doing. So there we are. There it is, all back together again. And we'll put it into neutral leave that in the neutral position for reassembly and that's all you need to do now i never normally replace the other springs i've never experienced any of the other springs breaking in all in all the miles that i've done on my own gs and all the other bikes other airhead gs or other airheads that i work on i've never known any of the other springs break it's just this pool spring here that you need to pay attention to Having removed this bearing, we've uh, also taken the top hat bush off and now I've got to get this spring off to get access to this gear. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to press down um, the uh, spring and, uh, and get this, this circlip out here. Uh, so to do that, I've just cut up this old piece of conduit which I've used before so that I can compress the spring and then get the circlip out of the groove. So I'll do that just by pressing down using the press here. So you can see I'm just pressing down on that spring and now I'm going to work on the circlip. So, just going to get this circlip out. Yeah, devil. Hoping that's done it now. So there we are, circlips one out of the groove, just want to have a look at the uh, components. Uh, there's the uh, the uh, input shaft gear that was on the input shaft. This part, which is splined to the input shaft, this assembly here is a torsional shock absorber, uh, and uh, this bears up against the spring. When the um, when the input from the um, clutch at this end drives this shaft, this um, allows these two cam faces to ride up against each other and compress this spring so that the, it absorbs uh, torsional changes in torsional direction depending on whether you're taking up the drive or whether the wheels the back wheels driving the engine um, and so they, these two parts are constantly rubbing together and uh, that causes wear and you can see this component here is badly warm 
and uh, we've also got the broken teeth on this so that means all these these component parts have got to be replaced now the problem is that uh, this is a fairly old gearbox 1981 uh, 100rf so because we've got to change these gears and this cam face we've also actually got to change this shaft as well there's nothing wrong with this shaft in fact dick last time he took this gearbox apart renewed this shaft but the new gears or the new cam face which is this component here this new one has got a different spline uh, so we've got to have a new shaft this is the new shaft which has got this spline on it so unfortunately this has turned into a really expensive job because we've got to replace this shaft nothing wrong with this shaft but we've got to replace it so that it can take the new cam face and um, um, then we can assemble it together so that cam that new cam face will fit on there this old one will not we can't use the old one on the old shaft anyway because the cam face is worn out and we can't get new ones of these so there's the conundrum so there's the bearing There's the new gear. There's the new cam face. The spring. Uh, I've lost the retainer. There's the retainer. So the other end of the spring. That should go over there. Okay, stop filming, Chris. This gearbox that we're having to uh, modify um, to so that we can put some replacement helical gears in um, the shaft that I've got um, to put the uh, in the new shaft I've got to put in the gearbox um, is uh, has a different spline on it and it's also a slightly different diameter which means that this collar which um, retains the spring on the old shaft this collar this is the the old shaft this collar goes over that shaft to retain the spring um, won't actually fit the new shaft so what we're going to have to do well we could either buy a collar to go on this shaft but I think what we're going to do is um, is uh, just turn this down on a lathe um, so that modification has got to be done if you're going to put a more or a later um, airhead input shaft into an older gearbox.